Hello, welcome to Tuesday's Devotions. I'm Pastor David Chubb at Trinity Lutheran Church in West Bend. Our scripture reading for the day is from the 20th chapter of Matthew's Gospel. It says there, as they were leaving Jericho, a large crowd followed him. There were two blind men sitting by the roadside. When they heard that Jesus was passing by, they shouted, Lord, have mercy on us, son of David. The crowd sternly ordered them to be quiet, but they shouted even more loudly, Have mercy on us, Lord, son of David. Jesus stood still and called them, saying, What do you want me to do for you? They said to him, Lord, let our eyes be opened. Moved with compassion, Jesus touched their eyes. Immediately they regained their sight and followed him. If you tuned in, Yesterday, you know that I'm talking about seeing this week, and I'm talking about seeing in this passage, but not necessarily the blind people whose eyes were opened, but the people who were surrounding Jesus as he came upon these two men. Do you see the pain and the need of the world around you? It's easy to just move through the world seeing, and yet not really seeing what's going on. There's much going on around us, and sometimes we just want to be able to get on with our life and not have to look at all this stuff. And yet, if we don't really see, we miss a lot. Jesus and his entourage are leaving Jericho, and two blind men are there, and they cry for help. The crowd sees two men in the way, ruining their session with the master, and so they tell them to shut up. They hardly notice the need of these two men. But Jesus notices and stops and asks them what they need and then responds and joy and hope and new life are born. But it begins with the willingness to see. The crowd just saw people they saw all the time and they weren't particularly impressed by what they saw. And in our lives, for hundreds of years, people of color have been crying out their pain to the world. They've been crying for justice. And we in the white community have been in many ways like the crowd around Jesus. Be quiet. There are more important things. I don't think it was always malicious. I don't think it was hateful. In fact, most of the time, I'm pretty sure it wasn't. But we were too busy with our own lives to worry about it, and we were happy when we could not see and we could not hear. But now the yelling's too loud, and we can't ignore it. But what if we had just listened in the first place? What if we had seen the need earlier? What would the world be like now? And even now there are those who are refusing to hear the real cry for justice and change. But we are called to listen. We are called to really see those who are calling us to change, to care, to make a difference. In the book of James, the writer tells the church, if a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what's the good of that? We can often see without really seeing, But the call of God is to truly see the needs of the world, to truly see the injustice in the world, to truly see those who surround us so that we can do something about it. I have been delighted by the young people in West Bend. They've truly seen the significance of the events in the world. While many are saddened, and even sympathize with the people in the community of color. It's the young people of West Bend who are organizing and marching and holding rallies. They truly see the reality. The question, I suppose, is do we have on lenses that help us to see the injustice and the pain of the world, or is it easier not really to see? At least not see enough to cause us to act. If you get a chance, go and read Luke 10. It's a familiar story. It's the story we often call the Good Samaritan. 
Three men uh, pass a person beaten on the road. Two of them see but don't really see, and they just pass on, going on about their work. But one stops and helps. And we are called in that passage by Jesus to do likewise. Many years later, Martin Luther King Jr. called us to a deeper level of seeing in that passage. He said, one day we must come to see that the whole Jericho Road must be transformed so that men and women will not be constantly beaten and robbed as they make their journey on life's highway. Do we really see the needs of the world? I think you'll be able to tell when we really see because then we will do something about it. And we can all do something. It always drives me crazy when people say, well, I can't do anything about it. Everybody can do something. We can pray. With our, we can do something with our hands and our feet, with our wealth, with our vote, with our lives. It's time for us to really see those on the road of life with us and to act. Let us pray. Open our eyes, Lord, to the injustice, the pain, and the need in our world. Help us to really see. Help us to see not just with our eyes, but with our hearts. Amen. I hope that you have a day in which you truly see what's going on around you and that in joy you can do God's work in those situations. Have a wonderful day.